Many university physical science labs physically resemble this robotics laboratory at Leeds University. Getting more women to study and pursue careers in STEM subjects, that is science, technology, engineering and maths, has in recent years crept up the political agenda. Looking at undergraduate enrolments in 2016-17 of students whose principal subject was physics, just 22.1% were women. And in computer science, just 17.2%. In engineering and technology, 17.6%. And in maths, just 37.1%. A study published today by researchers in Leeds and Missouri suggests that the solutions may not be straightforward. People have long thought that the more gender equal a country is, the more similar boys and girls and men and women will become in their sort of like interests and occupational choices. If you ask the average person in the street, well, do you think that there are more women going into STEM in, say, Finland or Norway than in Turkey or Algeria, people will say, well, obviously Finland or Norway, because we know those are very gender equal countries. And we see the opposite. So that is a very paradoxical finding, and that, that is why we call this study the gender equality paradox. The researchers took the level of gender equality as measured by the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Index and plotted it against the proportion of women graduates in STEM subjects. No countries were high on both measures. Countries like Finland, Norway and Sweden measured high for gender equality but low for women STEM graduates. For countries like UAE, Tunisia, Turkey and Algeria, it was the other way round. This, by the way, is the UK. What the study doesn't do is come up with any firm answers as to why this should be, although the researchers do have a theory. Life satisfaction is higher in gender equal countries. And we think that when life satisfaction is higher and when people feel more secure in a society, they feel they can do what they really like. They are less driven by economic interests. But there are other explanations offered, that women in less gender-equal societies haven't been excluded from science in the past, unlike women in Europe and North America. The only female Fields Medal winner, the Fields Medal is like the Nobel Prize of mathematics, was um, Mariam Mirzakhani, an Iranian-American woman. And I don't think that's a coincidence that she happened to be Iranian. Iran has very good rates of women in science. They don't have the same stereotypes for some reason as uh, Europe does. So I think really this, this reflects a historical fact. This long legacy of exclusion is the reason why in Europe we still see this lag, uh, you know, women catching up. We're still working so hard to change the culture because for so long the culture was so against women. <laughs> However, the gap in so-called STEM subjects only tells us part of the story about women studying science subjects at university. There are plenty of subjects with big gender gaps that favour women. Of undergraduates whose principal subject is medicine, 55.2% are women. In dentistry, it's 62%. In biological sciences, it's 63%. In veterinary science, it's 77.3%. And in nursing, it's 90.5%. Indeed, taken as a whole, women account for 51.5%, over half of science undergraduate enrolments. Most uh, subjects at university are dominated by, uh, by women. There are very few areas, we mentioned engineering um, and computer science, that are dominated by men. But the gaps there are actually much, much smaller than for things like uh, nursing, teaching, social work, education studies and so on. And I think it'd be much better if we concentrated in getting gender equality across all subject areas rather than just focusing narrowly on STEM. So why do men and women often end up on different career paths? Why are some occupations so dominated by one gender? The answers, it appears, are far from straightforward.